Hi guys, it's Satellite here, transmitting to your screens. Today we will be reviewing Tracks the Train Set Game, version 1.10 by Whoop Group. So let's send out that probe. Tracks is a game I have known about for some time, and I think I downloaded it a couple of years ago in a much more primitive form, whilst it was free on itch. I decided to download it to see how it had shaped up whilst I was on the Xbox Pass for PC, which I paid just a single pound for. Playing the game reminded me of when I used to play Hornby Virtual Railway back in the late 90s. I tried building my own track and found placing it to be finicky at first, but with an hour of using it, I had more or less got to grips with it and could place track down very fast. By the end of the hour, I had made myself a full layout with lots of junctions and separate lines. Once I put the track down, I then started to add the decor, like buildings, trees, rocks, streets, roads, and found myself playing it for the whole afternoon. I found it fun to create little scenes in the town that you might expect to find in a model village. Putting the whole thing together was a very satisfying experience, as I loved how everything just snapped into place. I decided to make a really long track in a different save to see if I could find a limit to the size of the world, and although I did find that there was a limit, it took me a substantial amount of time to get to it, so the potential for making a huge track is there, though I'm not sure how the game would hold a fully decorated track of that size in terms of frame rate. I was surprised how a game that I thought at first would be very simple actually had some quite in-depth features, like for instance how you can change the weather and actually watch as the land transitions into a snowy winter scene. You can also change the ground to several different types depending on what scene you want to build. I preferred the blank canvas world where I could just build whatever I wanted, however there are a few different scenes to open up. You can build your track around multiple different levels that resemble rooms in a house, where you can build track that goes off tables and chairs, which adds to that feeling that you're a kid whose mum has left the room for five minutes. There is another optional game mode to the free build that adds a challenge in which passengers and stations spawn at random points on the map and you have to build track and reach the passengers on time. At first it is easy but quickly starts to get more complicated as you have to join up with other train lines that you've already put down. I found the controls to be very fitting for the game, for example you can jump into first person mode to move a lever on the actual train left and right to switch track as opposed to switching the points themselves. You can also operate that same lever to control a turntable in which direction you need to rotate it. If you don't like the first person mode, the game is still half playable in free cam as you can switch the points too, though you can't control the speed of the train so you do need to switch into the cab view every now and then. I like the clean and smooth looks paired with the soft lighting that the developers have gone for. I think it looks pretty and goes that extra way to make the game feel just that bit more satisfying to play. I found the optimization to be fair, though I did notice frame drops where I had placed the more prop heavy city. The user interface was a little bit more on the clunky side and I wish the menus could have been a bit more merged together. I suspect this is because the game has been made with a console in mind as the original key bindings for the keyboard are also in strange places too. Whilst I really enjoyed building my layout, I came across an issue where I just simply was running out of new models to place down and after decorating my track all the way around, I was struggling to find new objects to place to keep the track fresh. There is a nice colour swap system where you can change the colour of select models, which does help to remedy this a little bit, but it could do with a wider variety of models in general. I think the game could also do with having more than just one train, like perhaps a diesel one. I think these problems could be addressed with the implementation of a Steam Workshop, which people could also use to share their creations with each other. Another criticism I have is also the price as the game at £16.74 in my opinion could do with losing a few pounds, as it is a little bit pricey for what gameplay you can get out of it. I will say however that I am reviewing this with an adult's head on, and the time and enjoyment a child can get out of it could be exponentially more, so it might be worth spending that money if it is a gift for your child.
I don't see any fundamental issues with the game going forward, and I can tell from looking at the developer updates and Discord that it's genuinely loved by the developers. In conclusion then, I feel that this is a hidden gem of a game that could just do with a few more extra features and polish to make it worth that price tag. That being said, I think a child could get completely lost playing this for hours. Uh, an adult could completely enjoy this game too, though for me personally I felt it didn't have quite enough meat on the bone to keep me returning to it. I may consider buying it for keeps on my Steam if the price drops significantly in a sale. That about wraps up the video for me, if you'd like to join me where I'll be coming back into orbit of this game or for my new reviews of other games in the coming weeks, then please do subscribe. Bye bye.